Hello there and welcome to In My Opinion for Panzer Paladin. The world is being attacked by evil space weapons that are opening portals sending out reinforcements controlled by some evil space bird who demands the world to bow down. In some military science place we join Flame, a rescue android being filled in on what's happening by her colleagues and she decides to take a big robot friend Grit out to stop this menace. It's not a deep plot but for this game it works. Flame comes off like a pretty cool kick ass take no BS lead which makes her dialogue entertaining the few moments it shows up. The rest of the cast is fine even though they are simple like you have your scientist lady, serious army guy, and wacky nervous guy. This is a 2D action platformer so you'll be knocking on enemies with weapons and jumping over spike and death pits. You control basically two characters as you go through these stages. First is the robot Grit. While as Grit you can walk, jump, and attack with multiple weapons which you can switch between each other. Each of these weapons do have a durability meter that once it's empty will break said weapon. You also have the option to throw your weapons which will break it as well or you can use a weapon's special ability which again will break it. The abilities are things like raising your defense, attack, healing yourself and more. These are temporary and you can tell when the time is up when the icon of the ability stops showing up. Against certain enemies you also have a parry attack. All you have to do is press attack right after you block an attack with your shield and the flash will happen stunning your enemy for a few seconds. You can also jump out of your robot whenever you feel like it to use flame. She's of course much more fragile than grit but faster and she has a whip to defend herself and swing by death pits. The gameplay here for the most part is nice and responsive as you're going through the 11 stages and of course the obligatory Dr. Wadi like castle area since after all this is a Mega Man like game. Attacking has a nice feeling to it when you make contact and the enemy placement is well done never feeling like you're put in a cheap situation. Even when you're out of grit and going on foot everything still clicks and it's rather fun swinging around. I also like that even though Flame can die pretty easily she still doesn't feel useless as her whip is rather powerful so much so that even when grit goes down because you wasted your health she can hold her own against normal enemies and even bosses as there were a few times where I scraped by with a victory using her. You're also able to refill some of Grit's health while as flame by whipping big health containers. And I do like that the game gives you full freedom to tackle the stages in any order you want. Thankfully the weapon durability is not a problem at all as you end up getting tons of weapons be it from enemies or even secret walls. And if for some reason you die and lose a weapon you can always get it back just by reaching where you died. You're also never caught off guard by it breaking since as I mentioned there is a meter while playing and you can also check your weapon's durability numbers when selecting the weapon. What's also helpful about the weapon selector menu is that it shows the weapon's strength, ability and lets you sort out the four weapons you can switch on the fly letting you swap out one you don't want to break or use yet. The abilities the weapons have are actually pretty useful as they do come in handy in a tough situation like near death or if you want that extra leg up on the boss. Speaking on the bosses, they are fun to fight and each of course has their own pattern and moves you have to figure out. And I always look forward to the next one. Though there is one that can go fuck itself as it just feels way too long. They don't have weaknesses like a Mega Man boss would but that doesn't diminish the enjoyment from the fight. What's also pretty cool is each boss drops a unique looking weapon and they are pretty strong as well but not too OP as to make you a god. The weapons also come in handy when it comes to upgrading grit as you can sacrifice weapons to give yourself a permanent health upgrade a set amount of times. This doesn't cause too much stress since again you'll have a crap ton of weapons before you know it and let's say if you want to just collect a certain weapon over and over you can replay any stage again to do so. I do have some issues with the gameplay as I said it's for the most part responsive and that's mainly due to how double jumping works. When you're inside grit you can stab downward while jumping which is pretty satisfying as you're pogoing enemies to death. You can also perform a double jump by pressing up instead of down which is needed for some of the platforming and while it works most of the time there were those moments where I swear I pressed it and it didn't come out and I would fall to my doom and it pissed me off since it wasn't my fault that I died. What's also annoying is that there is a weapon ability that gives you wings that lets you double jump like any other game would which should have been how it worked from the start just make the wing power up something else damn it. There's also a checkpoint system which is kinda iffy to me. As you're playing you will come to these altars that you can stick any weapon in it to make a checkpoint so when you die you come back right here as long as the weapon is inside. There are only two of these in each stage, one midway and one right before the boss. And I don't know if it's me but some of these stages make the checkpoints feel really far away from each other. And with the added chance of you falling to your doom this could lead to frustration as you're only given about 3 lives to make it through with some chances of finding some extra lives in secret areas. At least you can always change the game's difficulty whenever you feel like it so if you're still having trouble you can switch to easy or if you want that little extra challenge you can go hard. There is something that the game does not explain that spirit burden in your weapons menu and I had to look up on Google to find out what it is 
and it basically goes by how many weapons are in your inventory. The more you have, the harder the bosses are supposed to be, though I didn't really notice any differences to be honest. It also makes that horse mid boss pop up all the time, as if you had a low spirit burden, he doesn't show up at all. Though the fight is so easy and you get a weapon from it, so it's not really a bad thing. The game also has a cheat mode called Game Goblin, which you can learn about in the booklet that comes in a physical copy or just look up online. You can tell it's on by the goblin on the screen and this allows you to do things like give you a lot of lives. What's stupid is your game progress doesn't save if you use this cheat code, which makes the whole goblin cheat mode kind of useless unless you want to sit through the whole game in one shot. After getting through the game, you do have some other gameplay options. The first being remix mode, which is the same campaign, but the stages are changed up to make them more difficult. So the layout is different, like more traps and other obstacles. So if you want a little more challenge, there's that. And what's great is your health and weapons carry over and you can even upgrade your health more. There's a tournament mode in which you can face all the bosses again, like an arcade ladder and a fighter, where you start with a set weapon list and as you kill bosses, you gain more. So you have to maintain these so you won't be left with just your fist for defense. And by the end, you'll get a rank. Then you got Speedrun which lets you play any of the normal or remake stages you've beaten and try to beat them in the time listed. You also have a challenge mode which is pretty cool as you're transported to a VR area based on this stage and you must collect certain things in a certain time frame with enemies trying to stop you. Lastly, there's the award section in which you can check the in-game achievements with the game telling you how to unlock most of them, which is helpful if you're the completionist type. And there's the armory in which you can draw and upload a weapon you made but I can't draw for shit so it's useless to make. As you can see, the game goes for the old NES look, but of course, being on more powerful hardware, they can do a bit more in terms of what's going on the screen without making the game have a heart attack. What's on the screen looks great as each stage has a unique look, never feeling visually boring. While some of the grunts do repeat, there are some additions, be it one or two for each stage, and the designs themselves aren't bad. Though the most eye-catching designs are the bosses as each really stand out from one another, be it a succubus from New York to a giant evil snowman in Switzerland, and of course each have their own special animations. This is not to say our leads look dull, as Grit and Flame have nice and simple designs. You get a much better look at them in a few cutscenes the game has, and the art style of these cutscenes look like old school anime, think of something like Dirty Pair time frame, just pixelated a bit. I never really ran into any technical issues through my game time, so yeah, pretty smooth. Besides some odd double jumping and a sometimes iffy checkpoint system, I had a real fun time with the game and its great stages and character designs. I also felt that the difficulty is pretty fair and I like that you can change it whenever, letting anyone get through it. The game itself took me about 3 hours to beat, which isn't bad for this type of game, and you still have some good replay value in the remix mode, challenges, and speedruns. I say if you enjoy or have some interest in old school action platformers like Mega Man, then it's time to show some grit and save the world. I hope you enjoy my thoughts on this game, and for gamer's sake, keep gaming.